you very much. Morning Ruby Roses. We are, it is 20 past eight in the morning. Morning coffee has been consumed. We are navigating very slowly through the anchor field through a lot of very, very, very beautiful and expensive Turkish halits, halits, halits. Oh, we need to get fuel. The last time we fueled up was in Thailand. I have a very, very funny feeling that the cost of this fuel is going to be substantially different to the fuel that we picked up in um, Thailand. But nonetheless, we have a very big season ahead of us and I kind of think it would be prudent to go and get some fuel into our tanks. Not to mention, we're going to be sailing upwind. We're going to be motor sailing. I think we're going to be motor sailing upwind for the next few days. So, I mean, how far we go today is really going to be dependent on a few things. But one thing that is going to limit what we do is how long it takes us to get fuel. It's Saturday morning and there, there's, a, there's a fuel dock that opens in 10 minutes, but I can see a stream of motorboats heading towards there anyway. So I have a funny feeling we'll be waiting an hour or so to get fuel. We'll see. We'll see. Unsurprisingly, there's a little lineup for the fuel dock. I think that we're third. There is another boat behind me here kind of drilling around, but I think they've just dropped their lines and they were on that um, town dock. So yeah, hopefully we're third. I mean, at least for the moment, fingers crossed, knock on wood, etc. there's no wind, so it's relatively easy just to hang out and wait. Oh well, we'll need as much diesel, <laughs> diesel as we can get because I think the next few sails are going to be all upwind and uh, yeah, there might be some powering into headwinds in our very near future. Well, it's been half an hour. We're still waiting for the fuel dock to become available. We've had one boat fuel up and leave and now we're on boat two. We are number four. All right, made it onto the fuel dock. Didn't film it because we don't have an action camera these days because we have a problem with our battery. We're getting it fixed, tied up, getting diesel. We've handed over our blue card, which is actually just a piece of paper with a QR code. So they're gonna pump out our um, holding tank, which is a regulation in Turkey, it has to be done. And then we'll be on our way. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. How are you going? Good, so uh, yeah, we've got a pirate ship come up behind us. Playing Luke Vegas, Mambo number one. I'm hoping those people on board are having a really great Holidays? Sailing takes all forms. I can see a guy with a box of nachos. Nice. So anyway, we are on our way at long last. Uh, so it took us about an hour and a half, solid hour and a half. We are on our way out of Marmaris and heading towards, I don't know where we're going to go today actually. We've got a couple of options depending on the conditions that we meet outside the bay and yeah, basically that's it. How fast we're going, what progress we're making. So to see how it all pans out. All right, we are sailing the Mediterranean at bloody last. It has been a long, long time coming, but it has finally happened. Oh, wow. We have been dreaming about this for years. Whoa, Jesus, gotta watch that wind shift. We've been talking about this for, I mean, I remember talking about it when we met, like literally a couple of days into us meeting. Nick was like, hey, you wanna come sailing the Mediterranean with me? I was like, I sure do. Just wind's a bit fluky, Nick. Yeah, we're just between a couple of islands, so the wind is just shifting around a bit. So the fact that we are sailing the Mediterranean, we're actually in the Mediterranean Sea after all these years is really quite surreal, to be honest. It feels like it's happening to someone else, although I often say that about my life. I said that to Nick, I think, last night. Like, our life is just so unlikely that it just doesn't feel real sometimes. It feels like it's happening to someone else. Like, it's crazy. We live on this beautiful boat. We have amazing jobs, you know, making videos for you guys. I mean, you know, we complain about it sometimes because we're like, oh, we've got to film and I'd rather just be enjoying myself or, oh, the bloody YouTube algorithm is being a pain in my ass or whatever. But I know that we are just so incredibly lucky to have all this. The fact that we are finally in the med on our own boat is literally fulfilling a dream that we've had for 14 and a half years. We had to do it the hard way, I guess, and the very expensive way by shipping our boat here from Thailand. And uh, that was a tough decision because it was very, very expensive. And originally we wanted to sail the boat here for obvious reasons. One, because it would be fun. And two, because shipping was very, pricey 
but when sailing the Red Sea became um, even less of an option than it was already then we had to make a decision and I'm just so glad that we decided that we were going to be shipping to the Med because it's just something that we've always wanted to do sail around Greece and Turkey and that will be this year Greece and Turkey we're, we're not being too ambitious we're just going to stick to this locality and then maybe in future years we'll branch out and spend time in Italy and Sicily and some non-EU countries because of course we're both not Europe well actually that's not quite true I'm not European Nick is Italian but the, bo the boat is non-VAT paid which means that we cannot stay in the EU longer than 18 months so periodically we're going to have to take ourselves and our boat out of the EU which will mean going either back coming back to Turkey or going to places like Montenegro or Tunisia or for the moment Gibraltar um where else Albania the bureaucracy will catch up with us at some point but for now for today we are just sailing along the Turkish coast unbelievably and not quite sure where we're going to end up that will depend on how we're going I have a plan I have a plan and my plan is going to involve your old earplug hot kettle and fabric softener another day in the life the Vandalie Fabry household. I've got a plan. I think that James, when he built the, the line bins for the 1370, didn't quite understand that we could use them as washing machines. We have a drain plug here. Oh, I see. If I block up the drain plug from below. <laughs> it's like a sad little green <laughs> It's like a, what's it called? A glory hole. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So now you're gonna fill that with water yeah. and fabric softener and clean our lines. That is a good idea. Why don't you? I've been covered in salt for a year almost. The thing about it is, it's the salt that makes them hard. Yeah. So just a little bit of surfactant should get the salt out of them. Yeah. What actually is more important is I want to get that main halyard done. This should be as soft as a by the end of the day. Well, this involves us not having to do any, you know, literally having got to take the lines out. Nick, have you seen the colour of this water? Amazing. Anyway, sail, the main sail has been dropped, overdrive is on, you can probably hear that there's a lot of engine noise. We are doing seven and a half knots towards our anchorage, which is 17 miles away. So hopefully we'll be there in kind of two and a half hours, which will be mid afternoon, give us enough time to settle in, do a little bit of work this afternoon. It is lunch time, so let me get on with making lunch. Love our induction hub. I literally just stabbed my arm with a knife. I've never done that before. You're seeing a bit of filming. I'm filming you, filming me, filming the, for our patrons filming. Uh -huh. So if you two want to join our Patreon and get real time video updates, because of course. Are you okay? This episode is coming out in a few months time but our patrons know what we're doing in real time so like this literally very moment Nick will send them that video but <laughs> there's a notification that Nick just sent the video to our Patreon WhatsApp group and uh, yeah if that sounds like something you want to do then join us on Patreon links down below this is the dip that I bought I don't know what it is no, it's like at least at least ten meters. And it's spicy. You can try it. It's walnut. It, there's a photo of someone eating it with bread. No. 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 no, no. no. Take that. Eat that. Tell me if it tastes good. 
but this doesn't have chili in it. Walnuts, chili, apricot, olive oil. Some sort of um, spice that I can't. Lovely. All right. Usually I'll make up a proper dressing, but can't bother. A very, very simple lunch. Oh, the water is like milky smooth. The produce here just tastes so good. Yeah. I could live on bread, cheese, and tomatoes. You will be living on bread, cheese, and tomatoes. No, I know, but the, remember when we first met and you said, oh, I don't like tomatoes? Yeah. I understand, like. Watery shite. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Well, it's uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. I think we decided to, seeing as we did set off till 10. Uh, to actually make not just sail everywhere, but we're gonna pull up. Hopefully, we'll be anchored somewhere nice by about three. Can't even see the inlet from here, we're right on top of it, and yet seeing the opening is actually really difficult. You're there somewhere, I think. I think it's right in front of us, and yet we can't see it. Alrighty, found the inlet. There's five other boats anchored here and I believe there's like a pontoon or a dock that belongs to a restaurant here which looks empty to me. I'd rather be an anchor for a couple of reasons. One, because you're always swinging with the wind so you tend to get nice breeze through the boat and two, it's easier to manage. Just putting down the anchor and then raising it again in the morning is far, far easier. Um, but anyway, the dock is there I suppose if we get really desperate. But there's plenty of space. I think the challenge will be finding a spot that's appropriate depth. I don't know what the depth is right here, but it's very deep. Um, and also finding a spot which is sand. So yeah, we've got plenty of time. We've got all afternoon to get ourselves sorted. But look at, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Hopefully it will. The color of the water, like just where it, the water meets, meets the rocks there, is like this bright turquoise. It is beautiful. Oh, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> What a place. Did you say 38? 38, 38 meters, yes. Nothing, let's just wait for the um, boat to just swing around. Um, the chain is just going out to start a little bit at the moment. How many meters do we need out? 60? Yeah, okay. Do you want to very gently in reverse, just gently, like tick over? Seven zero. Seven zero. We've got seventy out. Yeah. Oh. So do you want me to advance a little bit? This is gone. Okay. Batteries are dead. How much? How much chain do we have, Nick? Ninety. Ah. Oh, okay. It's going to take a bit for the chain to straighten out, so we just wait for it to do that and hopefully bite. Oh, it's starting to swing now, so hopefully we're on the right track. Nick, are you in reverse? Are you in reverse? Okay, a little bit of reverse. Yeah. I think we're okay. Let's put the bridle on. All right, we're anchored. If you can hear that pump behind me, is that just a freshwater? Nick's gone. That's just a freshwater pump for the water maker, which we've been running for the last couple of hours. Pretty happy that we're holding. We reversed uh, pretty hard on the anchor and there was no movement at all. Bridle's on, we're swinging as you would expect if we we're holding, but we'll put our anchor alarms on. Apart from this boat right there that's blaring very loud music as they do laps around the anchorage. Absolutely stunning. We're one of so far six boats. I expect there will be more arriving throughout the afternoon because it's still quite early. It's only about three o'clock, I think. Uh, but this is lovely, super nice. You can see that there might be some like difference in direction of wind as the wind kind of funnels or whirls through the anchorage because we're quite high sided. We've got quite high mountains around us. Then the wind does some very strange things and people or boats end up facing in different directions. So that's why I'm happy with where we are. We have 
no one behind us yet. We're a fair way from the other boats as well, so we can all kind of swing around and just do our own thing. I'm very happy that we're here. We've ended up in a beautiful spot. I'm gonna sit down, it's three o'clock nearly, and I'm gonna watch all this footage because we broke, mm, I broke our um, shotgun mic the other day. It fell off the bench. I wasn't careful enough with where I put the camera down and we're using a very old microphone, which um, it's an old Comica microphone actually, which we've had for a very long time. And I'm very paranoid that our audio is not gonna be good enough. So I'm gonna check that now, I'm gonna check all the footage and then I'm gonna settle in for the afternoon. Maybe go for a swim. Clearly, you know, we're anchored, barbecuing. I, I kind of think the thing that we don't really, and we can't really show you is music. Like I live and we, I really am very much into music and because of YouTube's policy, which is very fair, we can't just, every time we film, we have to turn the music off. But just to picture things, like uh, we had, we were, we were blasting out rumors by Fleetwood Mac at a pretty considerate volume, but, uh, but a considerate but effective volume for the anchorage. So we've always got... we're downwind of everyone, yeah, so are. no one hopefully was too disturbed. So yeah, so we normally got music going. We've had a couple of uh, coronitas, and uh, one of our patrons gave us a very very nice bottle of tequila. So I've been sampling that to make sure it's not poison, and I can guarantee you that it's not. It's a very nice and sweet tequila, actually. Horrifically, I found out that we've run out of rum, which another one of our patrons gave yeah, us. A bottle of Bundaberg was the bollocks. It really it was. And, and and by the way... You're not a rum drinker and I am. And can, can, oh, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I know. Yes, thank you for the bottle of rum. So we need to get some of that uh, Bundaberg rum. Good Australian rum. It was, uh, a, it was a special one. It wasn't it was, just the plain old. It was old. a special one. It was a very special yeah, one. Yeah, lovely. Really. Yeah, so that was that. So today uh, we have uh, kofta kebabs. Lamb, la spicy lamb kebabs. We have um, eggplant. Zucchini. Now, I'm not a great fan of zucchini. Is it worth a zucchini or is it just zucchini? Courgette. Courgette, that's the one. You want to say goodbye to everyone? Goodbye. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We are loving being in Turkey. So happy to be here. And next week we continue our journey up towards Fokker, which is where we need to take Ruby Brews to so that we can hopefully complete our warranty, very small warranty items. Um, so yeah, enjoy us. So yeah. In <laughs> Jesus, I am, I am, I'm, my dinner's nearly ready. So join us for that one. Uh, if you want to subscribe, then please do. It really does help us. That's why I mention it so often. So thank you to all of those of you who do subscribe. And if you have not yet subscribed, please, please consider doing so. And we'll see you next week with more sailing around the Mediterranean, which I'm very excited about. Bye, take care.